world, and we are back. My name is Kyle Fischel. This is going to be episode 180 of my poker vlog. And for this one, we're back to our original stomping grounds, Orange City Racing and Card Club. Happy to be back. If you're unable to catch me in my travels, I'm constantly on Club GG online. You can mix it up with me on the virtual felt. I even stream the game sometimes. If you'd like to get into one of those, message me on Instagram or Telegram, and I'm happy to get you set up for that. Otherwise, let's run the tape. Not going to just rip on that turn card. Because I expect him to have kings some of the time. Just call. Ace, queen, he has nothing, so. So we buy into this Orange City 2-5 game for $800 before we get to the first hand of note. Folds to me in middle position. I look down at ace, jack of clubs. I raise to $15. The button and the big blind decide to call. So we end up going three ways to a flop which comes 6-6-3 six, six, with two clubs. A board that really won't connect to me all too often in the nut variety as I don't have many sixes in range and the button and big blind have a bunch, but I do have all the over pairs and two overs and a flush draw in range. So ace jack is gonna be a bet here. I make it $25. Only the big blind calls, which is kind of concerning as he's more likely to have a six than the button would typically, but either way, we are heads up to a turn card which is the 10 of hearts. When my opponent checks to me, it's time to lay on the pressure. A single three, four, five, maybe pocket eights. All these hands are gonna hate seeing a second barrel that's of the bigger variety. So we load up for $80, ace high in a dream, plenty of backdoors when called, but we are not called this time. Opponent folds and we have a warm welcome back to Orange City winning the first hand with just ace high. We move to a better seat for filming purposes for we look down at King Jack offsuit in middle position, we raise to $20. The cutoff decides to call as well as the big blind, so we end up going three ways to a flop, which comes king, nine, four, two diamonds. King of diamonds makes me a little less worried about flush draws. We have top pair. We have a decent kicker. We're going to go for some straightforward value into two players. I bet $25. And the cutoff raises to 75 Not my favorite spot. Not too many hands that he would do this that are less than a pair of kings with a jack. Theoretically, pocket nines, pocket fours. Two diamonds may mix between calling and raising, so we're not really putting him on a flush draw all too often. But either way, we've seen this opponent put money in with weak top pairs, so maybe he'll raise with a weak top pair. I choose to make the call, and we are heads up to a turn card, which is the seven of clubs. Blocking both flush draws, I feel pretty comfortable with my hand. The seven really doesn't complete anything. Since my opponent has the betting lead, I check to them. They choose to check it back. And the river is the eight of hearts. Now officially 5-6 gets there, but additionally 9-8. Just single pair, middle pairs that decide to turn their hands into a bluff. A lot of them get there, 9-7, 9-8. Not the cleanest run out I've ever seen, but I do believe that if my opponent had like ace-jack of diamonds, they might just bluff at this river card, so I decide to check it to my opponent. Happily put this top pair decent kicker into our check call range on the river. When my opponent checks it back, I'm pretty sure I have the best hand. I have king-jack, and he shows king six off suit so definitely just raising with the top pair you can see two streets for free so not the worst played hand by my opponent unfortunate for me that i didn't go for value on the river because this one probably gets paid 75 maybe 100 on the river but either way we are two for two so far before we arrive at the next hand of note i have king jack of hearts in the cutoff when under the gun raised to 15 there's one call i'm gonna three bet this one so king jack definitely strong enough if I thin the field and win now, it's great. Otherwise, I can play a bigger size pot with a strong hand in position. I make it 70. I think this is a good sizing. The small blind decides to call as well as the under the gun player and the limper. So my three bet got zero respect. Orange City games are insane. Four waste and a three bet pot to four, five, seven, two spades, one heart. Obviously bad for me. This is great for like a 15 call, call 70s range. They're going to have all suited connectors, all middling pocket pairs maybe six eight eight nine at some frequency as well as nines tens things like that when everyone checks to me i briefly think about putting a bluff out there but i think into three players it's kind of a punch so i decided to just check this one back hopefully i can turn a heart a king a jack and we do turn the six of hearts what a good sight there's a four liner out there but we have the second best flush draw possible first player checks second player checks if it checks to me a second time i'm definitely gonna throw out a bet here as a semi bluff but then the player to my direct right starts assembling a bet grabs one black chip put some greens on it i'm hoping it's gonna be like 125 150 give me a good price but then he settles on 200. Come on now, dog. 
<laughs> Come on, man. Ay, uh, not really giving me a good price right now. Kind of a bad price. Additionally, when thinking about calling here, not just hitting a heart and winning, but also is there a chance that I get any implied odds on the river? What I mean by that is let's say the river is the ginnest card ever, ace of hearts, and my opponent checks to me. Is he even going to call like a $250, $300 bet when the obvious backdoor draw gets there and now I'm betting? Maybe an eight's unwilling to fold here, but without a whole lot of implied value and relative certainty that my king and jack are both not outs as well i decided to just let this one go kind of disappointed because would have loved to see someone call see what the river card is but on this one we will never know everyone else folds all right time to bail my nemesis to my right i'm in the small blind with pocket sixes and it, with one limp he raises to 30 dollars on the button i choose to call the limper calls as well so we end up going three ways to a flop of jack three four two hearts relatively good board for me only one overcard feels great when you're playing sixes i check and flow checks to the button who puts out 65 dollars to me this feels a lot like just a standard c bet i bet on the button check to me i bet again i win a lot of the time so Sixes is definitely going to peel one. I think my opponent has like king, queen, ace, king, ace, ten, all kinds of stuff. Maybe hearts some of the time. So sixes isn't going to fold to one bet. I make the call. Turn is the eight of diamonds. Still seems relatively safe for my hand. My opponent shouldn't have any eights in range. But that doesn't slow him down. He continues for $135. And at this point, I really think he does have ace, king, ace, queen, maybe hearts. And yes, yeah, sometimes he just has a jack, but I do think there's plenty of hands that two barrel here that do not currently beat my hand. I choose to make the call. Additionally, I had seen this opponent bet twice and then just say ace high at the river, probably two or three times across an hour. So he's definitely capable of throwing barrels in without having it. When I make the call, the river is the queen of hearts. Kind of a dicey card. I do consider leading here for a brief period because if I have pocket sixes, I definitely have five six of hearts six seven of hearts all those hands so i definitely have some made flushes here but i choose to check to my opponent i do have showdown value i think he's going to give up some of the time after a medium-sized tank my opponent bets fifty dollars what is that what the f is that and now i think the door is wide open for me to me this is either ace jack ace queen or ace king i lose to two of them i beat one of them i would have flushes here sometimes and i do think that my opponent bets small here as he does have a single pair type holding and is somewhat worried about a flush however i choose to take the fancy play out of the equation here i'm not going to go for a check raise bluff even though i do have a heart blocker and could have flushes here i guess my opponent theoretically could just have ace king of hearts and play it this way kind of a weird river bet but not impossible after i think for a little bit i eventually decide on a fold i would ask my opponent later in the day what he had on this hand specifically because i was quite curious especially with the odd river bet theoretically i could have just called here and seen his hand i do have some shutdown value he would tell me that he had pocket queens if he's telling the truth which i suppose makes sense he's definitely not folding to a river raise and i really didn't need to call two bets i guess on this one cost me a decent amount of money but we win a small one for a move to the main game, get seated in a very less than optimal seat for filming, but that's okay. We have Jack-9 offsuit in the big blind. A middle position player makes it 30. I choose to call. It's my first hand at the table. Not going to just roll over that quickly. And because I'm the only caller, we are heads up to a flop of 7, 8, 4, 2 clubs. I do have a single club, so I'm going to go for a check raise if my opponent bets. This board clearly is better for me than a middle position raiser. But my opponent decides to check it back. Alright, this makes it a little bit harder for me to win here, except the turn is the ten of spades. So we bink the literal nuts. Because my opponent did not see bet, I don't really expect his hand to be too strong all that often. So I'm going to go for a half pot size bet, kind of small, but still want to get some value. I bet $30. When my opponent makes a call, I'm really happy to see that, hoping for a brick on the river. And a brick is what we get. Get. three of spades is a very welcome sight we have the literal nuts thinking my opponent has just a lot of ace highs and just full air i'm gonna go over pot on this one want to make it look like i missed clubs so that he might think about calling super light with an ace high additionally the fortunate times where my opponent turned to 10 he might just not be able to get away from it he does have a massive stack of about 2000 so 150 shouldn't be too much off the top of that but my opponent pretty much snap folds so my disappointment is immeasurable and my day is ruined
Maybe he just whiffed and was trying to float in position. Maybe the bet was too big. I don't know. Either way, we win the first pot at this new table. Feels pretty good. Before the next hand of note. I have 7 8 of clubs in middle position. With two limps, I raise up to $30. Seems like a decent hand to play. Even have to play multi-way. Well, one late position player calls and one of the limpers. So we end up going three ways to a flop of jack five, six with one club. So feeling great, open-ended, plus backdoor clubs. I'm going to continue small here. I think I can two barrel a lot of over cards, a lot of middling cards. And all clubs gives me a great chance to bet small here, bomb turn, and possibly win. So I start with a $35 bet. And only the player to my direct left decides to call. So we're out of position, heads up to a turn card which is the Jack of Diamonds. Honestly, the worst card I could see. If my opponent has a Jack, he's just never folding. Two barrels are pretty much out of the question now. Apart from the times where I could get spades to fold on this turn card, but not really interested in firing away when the top card pairs. So I check, my opponent does not check. He bets $55 and this small size makes me really believe it's not a draw, definitely not spades. So I just fold, not really interested in chasing a straight on a paired board. And my opponent shows Jack nine. So didn't ask him to see, but we're gonna get that information for later because probably the very next shuffle, I look down at nine seven of diamonds. Now I'm in early position. With one limp, I raise to 20. With one less limper, we can size it down a little bit. We're probably going to go multi-way, and that's definitely the case when a late position player calls and the limper. We end up going three ways to a flop of 9, 7, 8 with one diamond. So we have open-ended again. Now we have bottom pair, backdoor diamonds. When it checks to me as this is a board that is not going to connect to me all too often, I'm going to check this one back. My hand can easily check call or check raise depending on how I feel about my opponent's bet sizing. But on this one, it checks through. On the turn five of diamonds, when it checks to me a second time, we're going to bet here. We should have the best hand some of the time. The times we're not, we have like 17 outs to just near a nutted hand. So I bet $30 and the player to my direct left, same player from the last hand, is the only caller. So now we are heads up to a river card, which is the five of hearts. Board pairing card, not the greatest. I checked to my opponent, and this time my opponent does the same thing as last time, bets $55. This is where player dynamics is going to play in. Do I think my opponent would make three of a kind two hands in a row? Well, no, that's very unlikely. Do I think my opponent would have showed that last hand three jacks and then try to use that image to his advantage yes yes i do it's the same sizing it's the same kind of run out he showed the nuts last time so i do think he's trying to capitalize on some table image which makes me want to call here even more than usual additionally if we took that player dynamic out of it my opponent could easily have just like ace nine for a nut blocker he could have like six seven pocket sixes maybe just ace high that he's not willing to give up on things that this is kind of a good spot to steal Either way, I call the $55 and he says you're good. Shows Ace 4 off suit. Ha! <laughs> Got he! <laughs> kind of unclear on the turn call, except maybe he was just really trying to capitalize on some image, because going for a 6 for the dummy end of a 4 liner seems less than ideal. Either way, we take this one down, we bluff catch, and we scoop another pot. We win up another smaller, less notable pot when we have top pair, which brings our stack up to about a thousand. We're actually into a thousand now after the sixes hand had to top off a bit before we finally get to the seat we want on the main game for filming purposes. On this hand, I'm in the big blind. The cutoff decides to limp, small blind raises to 20. I have king nine of clubs in the big blind. This could be three bet, but I choose to just call it to play against the small blind in position, so gonna rely on some post flop play to win this one the cutoff calls as well so we end up going three ways to a flop of ace 10 9 with one club on this card the small blind continues for 25 dollars i think this is a pretty straightforward call backdoor clubs any face card will give me a gut shot so we have plenty of outs and if the turn is like the queen of clubs at least some of the time i expect to go check bet fold and we win so we're definitely gonna peel this one and the cutoff decides to fold so we're heads up to a turn card where we Bink the nine of hearts. Well, that's probably the best turn card we could hope for. Just almost guaranteed to turn the best hand. Unfortunately for me, my opponent checks to me. We are not letting this check through. We did not just turn three of a kind to check. So we bet $55. Hoping my opponent has like queen jack, maybe a random ace. All kinds of things that are going to pay us off. And he does make the call. 
The river is the queen of clubs. Now, apart from King Jack, which I'd say is pretty unlikely, I suppose Jack-8 makes a straight as well, but I do expect my opponent to continue betting if he had a draw and didn't have a made hand on the turn. So we're going to try to target just a random ace. Maybe Queen Jack will get sticky. I bet $125, and my opponent snap calls. So I guess we could have got a lot more. As I announce a 9 and he just mucks his hand, um... Yeah, I think we did not get the max on this river bet, but, you know, we still got paid, so we'll take it. Decent-sized pot. On the next hand of note, I'm going to have pocket fives on the button. The hijack makes it 20. The cutoff calls. I call on the button. No reason to raise here. We'll just set mine. Small blind and big blind call. We are five ways on this one, where we do smack a set on queen 5-4 rainbow. With no draws and nothing to really be worried about, when the checks, I can kind of rule out anyone having pocket queens we essentially have the nuts in this hand but the cutoff decides to bet he bets 35 dollars i'm actually fine with this one going multi-way multiple streets with my set don't really want to scare off six seven random queens maybe nines and tens all kinds of hands we want to keep in there with very limited chance of winning so i choose to make the call to 35 dollars all the other players fold so we're heads up to a turn card which is the ace of diamonds bad card in general because i think if my opponent has a queen he's never really gonna bet on this one but he surprises me when he throws out 100 dollars again having position in this hand i think calling is the best option i can guarantee some money going on the river and it, the chance my opponent is bluffing with like 6-7, we want to keep that one in there as well. So I choose to just make the call again, and the river is the deuce of hearts. Any three is a straight. Not that I think it's very likely my opponent would bet two streets with a random three and just get there. But even if he did, my worries are completely evaporated when he checks river. If he had a straight, I doubt this opponent would ever check river. Probably just go for the value that he thinks he deserves. But when it comes to me, I'm not going to check this one. I want to go for a bet that I think is going to get called. Somewhat of a meaty size. Definitely want Queen X, maybe random aces that floated and turned top pair to call. So I bet $175. And my opponent snap calls again. Another one. I announced set and he's somewhat shocked and shows ace four. So on different river cards, I could probably get a bet and a raise in. Maybe even just bet bigger, but... The deuce kind of limited my ability to bet huge, but we'll still take the pot. It's a pretty massive one, the biggest one of the day so far. Happy that it went my direction. Following that, we look down at pocket kings in the big blind. Under the gun limps, small blind decides to complete. We are not limping pocket kings in the big blind. We raised it to $25. Both players side to call, so we are three ways to a flop of 10-5 deuce with two spades. We do not have the king of spades, so we're gonna bet here. Somewhat need to protect against flush draws. I make it $30 to continue. The on the gun player folds, but the small blind decides to call. Hoping for a safe turn card, which we absolutely will never get, it is the eight of spades. One of the worst cards I could see, my opponent checks to me, I think this is a very natural check back. If he has a flush or the ability to rep a flush, being check raised here would be a miserable spot, so I check this one back. And the river is the four of diamonds. Somewhat a brick, and my opponent checks to me. When he checks to me on the river, I can rule out a lot of flushes, I can rule out a lot of two pairs. I should have the best hand here almost always. So we're going to go for some value here. Bet our kings. A 10 should be able to pay off a $60 bet. So that's what I wager. And my opponent goes into the tank for about 25, 30 seconds. Really mulling it over. But then he eventually settles on a fold. Even though he had the 60 in his hand. And that usually means a call. Could not get paid on this one. Not the greatest result. But at least the kings did not get cracked. Next hand of note. I have ace-queen offsuit in late position. When a mill position player raises to $20, I'm 3-betting ace-queen in position. I raise to $65. It folds all the way to the preflop aggressor, who thinks for about 20-30 seconds, and then makes it $200. Oh! Dude! What the f***? First 4-bet I've seen all day. First 4-bet I've seen in a while, honestly. So I'm going to think this one over a bit. And I think against a standard 4-betting range of like aces, kings, queens ace king suited like ace queen off is just doing horrible against that range just always crushed if we give my opponent credit for having a wider four betting range let's put ace jack suited and pocket jacks in there we're still not doing too good only outright beating one hand and still just flipping with pocket jacks 
And if he's the best player in the world and we can add ace-5 and ace-4 suited in this 4 betting range, that only leaves 3 actual hands that we're even doing well against. All the others, we are almost dead. We don't really want to put in a whole lot of money when we are drawing very, very thin. So we just fold this one. My opponent looks very disgusted, says he wish he would have just called. Claims he had pocket aces. I would say that aces is the most likely hand when you see a 4 bet at a 2-5 table. So, happy I made the fold here. Next interesting hand, we look down at ace queen of clubs. Ah, oh, sh**. Here we go again. And when late position raises to $15 and one caller, I'm in the small blind. The point of this hand is to show that you do not get gun shy, you just play the hands you're dealt. Ace queen is a three bet. If you get four bet, you reevaluate. But until then, we are raising to $65 a second time. Big blind folds, preflop aggressor folds, and this time the button folds. So since he didn't four bet two times in a row, I think we can safely assume the last one he had it, and this one he did not. Following that, I looked down at King Queen of Spades in the plus one position. When under the gun raised to 20, I've been making it a note to want to three bet King Queen suited specifically more often, but versing under the gun specifically, I think we're just gonna call this one. It's not like cutoff versus button when everyone folded. This is the first guy, so we're gonna give him credit for a little bit of better hand. We're gonna just call this one and see what develops. The flop is Jack 8 4 all hearts. Not great. We have no hearts, but we do have overs. The preflop aggressor continues for $15. I think we can peel for $15. I think it's reasonable. If an over card comes, we can turn top pair. We can turn straight draws. We're not giving up just yet. When the turn is the ace of diamonds, my opponent checks to me. I think this is a great spot to bluff at. I do have four outs to a somewhat strong hand when called, but if my opponent had like queens or kings, this ace is going to be miserable for him because I could theoretically just have the single ace of hearts call and then just have like a nutted hand at this point. I bet here because a jack's probably always going to fold, 9-10 can't really hold on, any pocket pair even with a single heart is probably going to hate this card because I could easily just have the ace of hearts here. So I decided to sell my bluff for $35 and my opponent raises to $125. I was not really anticipating this at all. I was actually very surprised to see it, but maybe my opponent just has the naked ace of hearts. And against that, I'm drawing almost dead. So I choose to just fold here and my opponent actually shows ace king of hearts on this one. Says he can't believe how he's not getting paid by me. And I'm sitting there like, man, am I just, am I just a calling station to these people? I don't even know. You have all the hearts. What's going to pay you? sir oh well we're in the game for 1000 so we got a little bit of profit here but we're not done yet we have one last interesting hand when i'm in the big blind with pocket queens a middle position player raises to 15 we are three betting queens because they're very good hand i make it 50 dollars, and he is the only caller the flop is king eight three with two hearts we do have a heart so that's helpful i guess but I think Queens is a very natural check call in this one, one of the strongest calls we're going to have. So when I check it to my opponent, he decides to check it back. The turn is the Jack of Spades. Not really great. I guess 9-10 is open-ended now. Jack 8 improves. But as mentioned, I think Queens is one of our best check call candidates in this spot on this board. And when I check, my opponent bets $60. Well, we planned on check calling, so it seems like an easy call. The river is the seven of hearts. We do have the queen of hearts, which is helpful. We block the flush. When I check it, because I don't have the preflop aggression anymore, my opponent bets $125. And I don't really think there's much thought on this one. I chose to take a check call line, so that means I have to check call down. Additionally, I've severely interrupted my hand. My opponent could theoretically be going for two streets with just a random jack, so... We beat some hands, we may have got our opponent to bluff, and when we call, my opponent just snaps, says, you're good, nine high. He doesn't actually show, but I suppose the multiple streets of checking got us the absolute maximum on this one, because nine high is probably not calling too many bets from me. So after this hand, we are into the game for $1,000, out of the game for what I think is $1,435, but unfortunately for me, this pitcher, these are stacks of 19, which I did not know until I broke it down, so actually out of the game for $1,370, which is $370 of profit across 6 hours, equating to $61 an hour, or 12 big blinds an hour. Yeah, the stacks of 19 versus 20 has like literally never happened to me before, so that was kind of funny when I was cashing out and it was $65 less than I thought it was. One of those things, I'm sure it's happened to other people, but definitely less than ideal. Otherwise, the session went really good. Made a few decent hands and was able to get value on almost every river. When I would bet with the best hand to get called, when I would call bets on river, it was mostly correct. 
bluff caught a few times and that worked out well. If you have made it all the way to this point in the video, I appreciate you sticking with me. I appreciate all the likes and subscribers I have. So if that is you, I appreciate it. Thank you for watching and I will see you on the next one.